In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use applique with our free motion machine embroidery. We can use Bonda Web, which has been used in this flower, or we can create our a applique without Bonda Web as displayed by this flower. I'm going to use Bonda Web to um, combine my two fabrics together. You've got the rough side and a paper side. So it's the rough side that we actually stick to our piece of fabric that we're actually going to do as our applique. What we do is I use a, a silicon sheet when I'm using anything to do with Bonda Web because I don't want either stickiness on my iron or my ironing board. So it's the rough side, the non-paper side, that goes down onto your fabric. So that's it, rough side nicely laid over the fabric, silicon sheet comes across the top and then we use a hot iron firmly on the fabric and that bonds the fabric to the bonder web. Now we can see it's all stuck so we've actually got that bonder web is now stuck to the fabric. What we're going to do now is draw our shape that we wish to use as a replique out of our Bonda Web fabric. I'm going to actually draw it on the paper side of the fabric because it's easier to do. Next we need to position our um, applique shape where we want it to actually go on our main fabric. We check with our embroidery hoop to make sure that our embroidery hoop is going to fit in the main fabric first two. Then we iron our plique shape to the main fabric again using our silicon sheet. For the next stage you can either uh, do what I'm doing and use a template or you can free draw the shape. I'm going to um, use an air erasable pen so it actually disappears after a little while. I've also got a shape that I'm currently using to draw my flower. Once I've drawn the shape, I then go back and I fill the rest of the shape in. I've got the circle in the middle and then the um, petals to fill in. So circle in the middle and then the various petals. Once we've drawn our uh, shape, we're ready to hoop up the outside hoop goes at the bottom and the inside hoop goes at the top of the fabric and this allows us to be able to move our hoop around the machine. Our applique shape goes central within that hoop to make it easy to actually um, do our sewing. The drop fade should be down or the darning plate in position and the embroidery foot on. We can now put our embroidery hoop in and position our applique to where we wish to start sewing. I'm going to gently start sewing around the circle first, making sure that none of the threads in the way. Just nice and gently around we go, positioning the thread out of the way of the foot to start with. And then I can go round the circle again. So I'm going to go round everything twice to start with. Again, this petal is going to be gone around twice with the sewing. There we go. Once, twice. Next time I'm moving to the second petal again. Once, twice. I'm going to continue sewing around my flower, all the different petals. I'm doing at a double um, sew and I'm doing the, the double at the same time. You can actually do the sewing, all the sewing once first and then go back and do the double again. It's completely your choice. I'm just choosing to do it this way because of the type of flower that it is that I've designed. 
I decided to go round the top part of the petals again because the centre of the petals had three lines of stitching and I wanted the top part to be as heavy as the middle section. So once you're happy with your sewing, you want to unhook your embroidery hoop from the machine and then snip all the spare threads that you've got from the front and from the back because you don't want any back threads shining through the front to your fabric. You can see the outline of my flower now with all the petals. I've actually got um, the Bondi Web fabric has actually come off a little bit so I've decided as it's actually lifted off a bit I would quite like to trim that fabric to the shape of those petals because you can see that it's actually peeling off nice and easy. So I'm going to trim around all that petals so that it looks nice and neat. Before I trim the fabric, I'm going to remove the fabric from the hoop and then I'm ready to start trimming. If you do decide to trim your fabric like I'm doing, you must be really careful that you don't actually trim the underlying fabric as well. It's a very, very easy thing to do. So you can see I've actually had to change scissors because the scissors that I started with were actually too um, thick. And so um, the smaller scissors made it a lot easier for me to trim. And here we go, a beautiful embroidered daisy flower. Next up is our flower without the bonder web. You could see that I didn't have anything attached to that piece of fabric. I now need to draw around my template of my flower again as I did previously. I haven't actually cut the circle out this time, I'm just leaving the fabric as a rectangle but I'm going to pin it into place on the backing fabric. I did smooth it out before I pinned it so that there's no creases in the fabrics. We don't want to actually build in creases before we sew. Again we need to hoop up. The large outside frame of the hoop goes on the bottom and the inner frame goes on the top and now we're all ready to start our machine embroidery. I'm going to start from the centre and build up exactly as I did on the uh, bondo web piece of fabric. The only difference is we must try to not get any creases in. So again just go really nice and slowly so that you actually can make sure that there's no creases in that circle because the fabric's not stuck this time um, to the base fabric. It's just you machining it that's actually going to hold it in place. So we're going to sew um, very slowly the first round and then we're going to sew around again. So we've got two rows of sewing in the centre. This time I'm going to actually sew it slightly differently than I did the last time. I'm going to go round it just on one row of sewing along the top. The uh, petals where they join will, because I've actually got to go up and down, they will actually have two rows of stitching on them. But along the top I'm actually only going to row, have one row of stitching and then I'm going to go over them all at the end. So you can see one row of stitching at the top but where the petals join, there will be two rows of stitching. I'm going to snip that um, piece of thread out of the way because it's going to keep catching. Now here we go again, two rows of stitching, one along the top and two between each petal. It would be very nice if I could go as quick as that. Once we've finished the um, petal once, so you can see two rows of stitching between each petal, but one along the top. I'm actually just going to go around the top of the petal again. So I don't need to go in between each petal because I've already got two rows of stitching there. But along the top, I'm going over it again. And then that very last bit where I finished, 
I'm going to go down again. It gives me two rows everywhere. So we can actually see this time it's very different from the other one. So we can see how it looks with two rows of stitching compared to three rows of stitching. As before, I'm going to snip around the fabric and cut out the flower. I didn't have to pull the fabric back this time because there was no bonder web on it. Again, as before, take very great care if you're doing this that you don't snip your base fabric. So we have the bonder web flower and the non bonder web flower, and the flower with three rows of stitching, and the flower with two rows of stitching. So two different methods of adding applique with your free motion embroidery, bonder web and non bonder web. To add a little bit more interest to the flowers, I've decided to give them a border and to also give them a stem and some leaves. So what I'm doing here is just going round the outside as a circle with um, my free motion embroidery and I'm doing it three times. When I do the stem, I'm going to go down the stem and then I'm going to go back up the stem and I'm going to do this four times. As you can see, for the stem and the leaves, I've actually drawn them out with my air erasable pen so that I actually had something to follow. Um, when I do the leaves, I'm going to go around them three times because I want to do a little bit of section in the centre twice. So my stem is four times, my leaves are, the outside of them are three times and the inner part of the leaf is twice just to really give a different weight to all the different sections. Finished flowers, the bonder webbed one, which I went round the outside of it as a curve around each petal, and the non bonder webbed one, where I actually outlined the whole picture just to give it a bit more definition. <laughs> 